What is going on everybody, it is your boy Pete, and today we're going to be looking at Damped Harmonic Motion. Today here to join me is a live studio audience. Live studio audience, please, it is your time to shine. Anyways guys, so let's get started with Damped Harmonic Motion. First of all, let's look at Simple Harmonic Motion, and if you haven't already, go check out Wallace's two videos on the topic, and then come back to this video. There will be annotations on screen right now so you can go check those out. So to look at damped harmonic motion we are going to look at a graph of a uh, damped harmonic oscillator and basically what is going on here is as time progresses the amplitude is going down. So if we think about like a pendulum for example and we when, we when we have a pendulum swinging back and forth eventually it comes to a stop and the amplitude becomes zero. This is due to things like internal friction and air resistance. The pendulum doesn't keep swinging back and forward unless there's some sort of, you know, external thing that's, uh, you know, pushing it to keep moving back and forward. The same way when you're on a swing and there's nothing and no one's pushing you, eventually you'll come to a stop. So here is damp harmonic motion. Now, why do we look at simple harmonic motion if in most cases in the real world we have damped harmonic motion. It's easier to mathematically understand simple harmonic motion as it, as opposed to damped harmonic motion and moreover uh, when the damping is small simple harmonic motion can be used to appropriate the same, the same system. But when damping is large we have different types of damping. The first type of damping we have is underdamped where a system oscillates back and forward until it reaches its equilibrium. So let's use a door as an analogy. If we have a door and we're about to close the door and it swings back and forth until it closes, that would be an example of an underdamped system. A system where, again, it oscillates back and forth until it reaches its equilibrium position. The next type is overdamped. And overdamped is when it does not oscillate forward, uh, back and forth, but the amplitude slowly changes. It takes the longest time to reach its equilibrium position. So again, going off the door analogy, if we have a door and we, when we have there's some sort of stopping mechanism, we, the, the door would take a long time to close because of the, it being overdamped. In places like California, doors are overdamped because of the frequent occurrence of earthquakes. The next type of dampening we have is critical damping. And critical damping is damping where the system reaches equilibrium in the shortest possible time and it does not oscillate back and forth. The, the amplitude slowly decreases until it reaches its equilibrium, equilibrium point. Now, the recoil mechanism in a gun, for example, is an example of critical damping. The recoil mechanism, it attempts to go back to the resting position as quickly as it can. So this is an example of critical damping. Again, the key here thing to remember is that critical damping is when the system reaches its equilibrium point in the fastest possible way. So if we superimpose all these graphs together, here's what we get. We get we have our underdamp system, our overdamp system, and our critical damping system. So that is all guys for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed this short video on damping harmonic damped harmonic motion. And as always guys, the more you know, the better you are.